So, like you, at the moment, I'm stuck at home, self-isolating. We're in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, and I thought it'd be good to have some projects to be able to do at home while we're all self-isolating. So, thankfully, I bought this knife before we went into isolation, but I'm sure you can order one from wherever you choose to order knives from. This was a very cheap and cheerful IKEA knife with a fairly rubbishy sort of handle, and I decided I wanted to restore it. I have watched a few of the My Mechanics and Blackbeard Project videos and decided to give it a go and see what I could achieve. So first job was to be able to cut the handle off. This actually took a bit longer than I expected, simply because actually it's quite tough. There is a tough plastic core inside the rubber, but having got the plastic off, I then decided to reshape the blade. I drew myself a template to be able to give myself some idea of exactly what I wanted to do, marked it all out with Sharpie pen so it wouldn't come off, and then used a Dremel type tool. It's actually not a Dremel, it is a Amazon cheap knockoff sort of thing, but I used one of their cutoff blades to be able to cut that off and to be able to start shaping everything. It created a lot of smell, and I was not particularly popular with my wife for having done it inside. Next time, definitely going to do it outdoors. So the shape I had decided to do my knife was, roughly speaking, a nakiri design. Now this is kind of a Japanese vegetable cleaver, I guess is probably the easiest way to describe it. So it is a, a vegetable knife, but because you have a nice large flat side, you can create very, very fine cuts. So that was the design that I went for, but to be honest, you could apply these techniques to any shape of knife you choose. Then decided to try and refine my edge that I'd created by cutting the edge off. Sandpaper was semi-effective. It did help to some extent, but you can see here that I had quite a gap where I hadn't cut in a perfectly straight line. So continued with the sandpaper to try and actually create a straight edge. What I wanted ideally was a slight turn up at the very end of the blade. Having decided that sandpaper doesn't really work as effectively as I thought it might, I then tried using the Dremel thing with an abrasive burr. It was not super effective. Uh, I did get a little bit more luck with a sanding burr, but again it wasn't as brilliantly effective as I'd wanted it to be. So what I did was got a sanding wheel, a flap wheel, for my cordless drill and used that. That was more effective, but it still took a lot longer than I expected it to. My main project with this was the fact that I didn't have any specialist tools. I have done a small amount of blacksmithing. I've done two or three days of courses, but I don't have any access to specialist tools at home. These are all just bits and pieces that I have in my house. The flat wheel did help and you can start to see it getting that slightly rounded end as it improves. My main issue was actually the surface finish that the knife was provided with was pretty rough and had IKEA imprinted on it so I decided that was the next step to try and improve the finish of the blade. So I hand sanded. Initially I didn't actually have a sanding stick and I wanted to be able to create a flat edge so I used a ruler. Again not super effective. So I got a piece of kindling and I got a piece of cork board and essentially created a sanding stick which was far easier to work with and just made life a whole lot more straightforward. It also gave me a slightly softer surface to be able to make sure that it would go into some of the irregularities if there were irregularities. So I just wanted to give it a slightly more... My original aim had been to go for a full mirror finish but you'll see at the end that I changed my mind on that for one very obvious reason, but I may polish it up again in the future. But I just wanted to be able to create a slightly nicer finish and take away some of the machining marks that were there from the original production. Having sanded it to 2000 grit, which is quite a nice smooth finish, I wanted to be able to get it really nicely up to a mirror shine, which again, if I had access to a polishing stand would make life a lot easier. I don't at home, so I decided to use a polishing wheel. I think it's designed for alloy wheels. Again, I got it off Amazon. It was a pack of six that came in fairly cheaply. And I used some polishing compound that I actually use for 
sharpening the blades. This was not a good idea to do in my room because it was really, really quite dusty. So after about 30 seconds of trying it, I decided probably best to give it up as a bad idea and try again once the sun was out the next day. So Pip decided she'd like to try and help, but I'm not sure it's entirely appropriate to mix Jack Russell's and power tools. I used two different polishing compounds. I used a blue coarser polishing compound and then a red finer one. And you can see that it got up to a pretty decent mirror finish. Uh, I, If I was going to be really fussy, there's still slight surface marks on it. But to be honest, for what I was able to do at home using what I had, I was pretty pleased with the finish. Once I had the knife as I wanted it, I then decided to start work on the handle. So I used two woods. I ordered them off, I think it was called the Bushcraft Store, uh, where they have various woods for handles. There are lots of places online to be able to get small amounts of exotic wood. So I was using rosewood for near the blade, and then I used holm oak, which is one of my favorite woods for the rest of the handle. I also got some vulcanized fiber inserts just to be able to create defined lines. And you can see that I had to cut the handle so it was aligned with the guard on the blade and then cut the whole moak so that it would fit behind it. You can see the results, it's starting to look like it might work. So I then did some further work on smoothing up those edges. This was not brilliantly effective again with better equipment with a bench sander with a disc sander might have made this a little bit better. It's very difficult to try and keep your hands completely flat when you're sanding like this. And it turns out my wife really didn't like all the dust I created. Again, tried doing this with a flat edge, but it just created a rounded surface, which wasn't exactly what we needed to be able to fit tightly against the hilt. I always knew that the fit against the hilt was probably gonna be the hardest thing to be able to achieve in a home setup quite like this, but I was pretty pleased with the result that we got in the end. Here I am gluing each side of the blade together, testing with a wrench. I just used a Gorilla 5 minute epoxy, spread it liberally, and then jammed everything together, and then left to set. You can see the fibre inserts in between the two woods, and then I, I'm going to use another piece between the two sides of the handle. So I drew out a design for the handle and then essentially traced that onto the handle so I knew how things would line up. Because the rosewood was significantly smaller than the holm oak, I knew I had to be quite careful with the shape that I could actually create. Again, just made sure that the inside edges were as smooth and as flat as possible so they'd fit against each other. And then I cut off the fiber excess so that I could actually get some flat surfaces on the back and front to be able to scribe out the space for the handle. So the rotary tool that I have has a router type attachment. It's not perfect, but it works reasonably well. So I scribed out the shape for the handle that needed to be able to fit into, measured the depth, this was probably my least favorite step, simply because it just felt like I was using tools that weren't brilliantly designed for this job, but it did work. It created a lot of mess and it took quite a lot of steps and quite a lot of trial and error to be able to get it right. The end results are not perfect in terms of the fact it doesn't give a brilliant fit all the way down, but it gave enough of an interference fit for me to be able to be happy it will glue up fairly well. Turns out rosewood smells absolutely wonderful when you cut it. Holm oak, it was nice, but it wasn't quite as nice as the rosewood. I was using some sandpaper just under it just to be able to keep it firm because where I was only being able to clamp it at one point, the other end often decided it wanted to go for a little bit of a drift. I think part of the reason I enjoyed this bit least was simply because it's actually the bit that was probably most critical to getting things right in terms of everything else 
can kind of come down to expression and shape and deciding how you want things to look. This was the bit that technically needed to be right to be able to get the blade to fit into place and to be able to allow everything to glue up and hold together well. I had to do some small adjustments just at the end to make sure that everything sat easily and comfortably together. It's also just experimenting with all the different bits on the rotary tool. Some worked brilliantly, some didn't work quite so well. I'm just cutting out the fibre insert as well to make sure that that's going to fit in between the two pieces when I glue everything together. Again, I used the epoxy. I also used a small amount of sawdust just so it would actually create, if there were any micro gaps, it would create a coloured epoxy so that filled it up rather than just having a big wadge of clear and then wedged everything together made sure that everything fitted nicely actually could slide the handle in most of the way even when it was still gluing just to check everything fitted you can see here there is a slight gap just between the handle and the blade which i'm not entirely happy about but decided to fix that so i remeasured my angles I cut off the excess, made sure that everything was the right shape and used a coping saw to be able to re-finish the fitting angle to get as straight an edge as possible because I found that was far more simple than trying to sand it into the perfect position. Trying to cut off a very small bit was quite fiddly but probably easier than trying to sand it completely flat without a belt sander. And then with a bit of tapping and a bit of persuasion, the fit was starting to look better. Still not perfect, but definitely better. So I then used a coping saw to be able to cut the rough shape that I'd drawn for my handle. You can see my drawing for the handle is very rough. It was just a simple suggestion of where I wanted the outline to be. I suspect there are lots of woodworkers out there looking at my technique and questioning what I'm doing but and it worked it's not pretty at this point but it worked at this point the fit up once it had been tapped into place was starting to look much much better I tried planing it initially to be able to start to get some shapes right a the table kept moving and b I just don't think I'm very good at planing so that's something I want to work on but planing I decided was not my forte. I refined the shape where I decided I just wanted slightly less to work on and then went back to using the rotary tool to start to carve and this bit was really good fun. This was just essentially getting to play with wood. It was a little bit like power whittling I guess. It was just using the rotary tool just to be able to create the shape exactly as I wanted it. So initially I was using a tungsten carbide burr with a flat edge to be able to take the bulk of the material off. The difficulty with this one was it meant it didn't give me a huge amount of reach. It gave me the sides fairly easily and the corners, but it didn't allow me to get to any of the bigger, flatter surfaces. Again, this creates a lot of dust, so I think my wife was pretty pleased that I was outside doing this bit. And it was a lovely day. It was one of the first sunny days in spring, so it was quite nice to be able to be sat outside enjoying a bit of woodworking. Pip was a little bit upset that I wasn't giving her more attention. Once I got the basic shape sorted out and lined it up with the handle, I tried giving it a bit of a sand to start seeing, roughly speaking, whether the shape I'd got was where I wanted it to be, and to check that everything would fit up nicely with the handle, create a nice flush transition from the wood onto the metal. I'm not entirely sure this bit was completely necessary, but it it gave me a better sense of where I was. I then switched to a sanding drum on the rotary tool and this actually gave me far better control. I couldn't take off anything like as much but it gave me better control to be able to get the fine details right and I just continued to work on this. I think this was probably one of the longest parts of the process but also just really good fun getting to work it out, try it in my hand, see what fits, see how it felt make sure that the lumps and the bumps were all in the right place, make sure that everything felt like I felt like it should. Once I got it roughly shaped and I was pretty happy with the shape of it, I then decided to glue it all up so I could then actually feel it as the weight of the actual knife itself. Again, I mixed a whole lot of sawdust in with the epoxy 
spread it liberally into the handle and onto the knife, gave everything a good tap together and then pinned it in place with a vise just while everything's sealed. You can actually see the brown of the sawdust in the epoxy on that handle. So I think at this point, it's starting to look like a knife. Then having the knife in place, and at this point, because I'd cut off the blade, it was completely blunt, so completely safe to work on like this. You can see how I'm holding the blade. There's, there's no edge on that at all. I'm sure that is bad etiquette, but I knew there was no sharp edge on there. So just continued to work, continued to play with how it felt, started to clean up around the margins where it met the metal, and then got on with the process of hand sanding. And this was just to make sure that the surface was all completely smooth and make sure the transition was absolutely spot on. The sandpaper on the drum machine was about 60 grit, so then just being able to switch down to about 150 meant that I had far better control and I could make sure I got a far better finish rather than taking away too much and having to repair it later. So at this point I decided the shape of the handle I was happy with, so it was just a case of smoothing everything up, making sure that everything felt right. And again, this took a while, but it was quite nice. I, it felt like I had a knife at this point, so it felt like the home straight. You can see those black inserts on the side and on the top edge of the handle. Just give it a little bit more definition. And then a finish of mineral oil, just to make everything nice and shiny. Got it. I ended up giving it lots of coats of mineral oil. I'm not sure how many is necessary, but the lots that I gave it seemed to work pretty well so far. So next came probably the most tedious bit of the process, and that was sharpening the blade, because with a belt sander, a bench grinder, this process would have been very straightforward and very quick. However, doing it purely on wet stones and having to take it from a completely square edge to a taper took a long time and a lot of patience and a lot of forearm aching. So I started on 180 grit and created the basic shape. So I continued doing this until I'd created a bit of a taper and a bit of a point. I could see that there was a point on the actual edge of the blade and I could start to feel a burr forming from one side to the other as I worked from the one side to the other to balance everything up. Once I had a burr forming, I then proceeded through 300, 1800 and 3000 grit whetstones to be able to make sure that everything was beautifully sharp. And then finally finished it off with a leather strop but I think by this point my camera had turned off, so sadly I don't have any final evidence of me finishing it on a leather strop. When I said earlier that I changed my mind about the mirror finish, because there had been a few little marks left on the blade from sharpening and from some of the working, I decided I was going to try and take those marks out, so I started with a 400 grit sandpaper to be able to smooth those out with the plan of going up to a mirror finish, but then I cut myself because it turns out the reason you shouldn't work on a sharpened blade is because it's a sharpened blade. So I think actually you can see the blood on my shorts in one of these shots. So I wouldn't recommend trying to repolish a sharpened blade. If I can find some way of being able to make it safe in the future, then I think I may redo this at some point again. And there we are, a finished knife. So. As I said, the original purpose of this knife is as a vegetable cleaver, and you can see just how cleanly, even crispy carrots, it just slices straight through them and makes unbelievably fast work of dicing and slicing. It is a beautiful knife to work with. Yeah, I was really pleased with how sharp I managed to get that. It is a little bit scary. Emma doesn't like using it very much at the moment, simply because it is so sharp, she's worried she's gonna end up hurting herself. But yeah, you can see just how sharp that is. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been a little bit inspiring. If you'd like to have a go making your own knife, give it a go, stay safe. I think you can see from this, I was able to do it with stuff that I had in my own home. So enjoy, have a go, and I'd love to see your results. So please comment below if you've had a go in the past or if you're gonna have a go and stay tuned for more isolation projects in the future. Please subscribe if you'd like to and like the video if you liked it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.